as we move into the second chapter of Paul's letter to the Thessalonian believers, we find a continuation of themes that connect his ministerial integrity with the transformative power of the gospel. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 1 reads, For you yourselves know, brethren, that our coming to you was not in vain. This statement not only reaffirms the effectiveness of Paul's visit, but also underscores the deep and lasting impact that his ministry had on the Thessalonian community. The use of the phrase, was not in vain, implies that there was a possibility of doubt, either from external skeptics or internal struggles within the Thessalonian church, regarding the value and success of Paul's work among them. In responding to such doubts, Paul is not merely defending his own efforts, but is highlighting the authentic, divine backing his mission received and the tangible results it produced among the Thessalonians. This verse serves as a launching point into deeper reflections on the nature of effective ministry and the characteristics of a visit or mission that is not in vain. At its core, a ministry that is fruitful and purposeful is characterized by several key elements, each of which was evident in Paul's approach and can be seen as essential for any ministry today. Firstly, a ministry that is not in vain is grounded in sincerity and integrity. Paul's approach was not based on deceit or ulterior motives. It was straightforward, honest, and transparent. For modern believers, this reinforces the need for purity of motive in all ministerial and personal interactions. Our actions must stem from a genuine heart for God and a desire to serve others, not from a desire for personal gain or acclaim. Secondly, effective ministry involves significant personal sacrifice and hardship. Paul's journeys were fraught with danger and opposition, yet he persisted because his primary concern was the spiritual welfare of those he ministered to, not his own comfort or safety. This level of commitment challenges today's believers to consider what sacrifices they are willing to make to share the gospel and build up the body of Christ. Are we willing to endure discomfort, misunderstanding, or even persecution for the sake of the gospel? Thirdly, a ministry that bears lasting fruit consistently points back to the truths of the gospel and the person of Christ. Paul's effectiveness was not due to his eloquence or personal charisma, but was the result of his constant emphasis on Christ crucified and risen, the true message of salvation. In contemporary ministry, this element is crucial. The message of Christ and Him crucified must remain central to our endeavors, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Furthermore, an impactful ministry fosters deep, lasting relationships built on mutual love and respect. Paul frequently refers to the Thessalonians as brethren, a term that signifies familial bonds. His ministry among them was relational, not transactional. He invested in their lives, cared for their well-being, and nurtured their faith. Today, this relational aspect remains vital. Our ministry efforts should seek to build genuine community where members feel loved, valued, and connected. Finally, a ministry that is not in vain leaves behind a legacy of transformed lives. The true measure of Paul's visit wasn't in immediate results alone, but in the ongoing faith, love, and hope demonstrated by the Thessalonians even in his absence. In the same way, the effectiveness of our ministry today should be gauged by the lasting spiritual growth and maturity it fosters in individuals and communities. 1 Thessalonians Chapter 2 verse 1 is not just a defense of Paul's ministry. It is an affirmation of what genuine, effective ministry looks like. It challenges each believer to reflect on their own efforts in sharing the gospel and building up the church. Are our ministries marked by integrity, sacrifice, a clear gospel message, deep relationships, and transformative impact? These are the hallmarks of a ministry that is indeed not in vain, one that faithfully reflects the work and message of Paul and ultimately 
the heart of God.